Marcel Duchamp is one of the most enigmatic forces of culture of the 20th century. Marcel is somebody who did not take himself seriously. He refused the role of the celebrity philosopher. He's always uh, approaching every question and every answer with an enormous sense of humor, sometimes extremely impolite and even obscene. And from these linguistic sculptures that he invented came his artwork. So uh, you cannot understand his artwork without at least trying to get into the inside mechanisms of his uh, puns and his language uh, sculptures. Don't forget he was a chess master. And so, as you probably know, even if you don't play chess yourself, is that the idea of the chess game is to enter into the mind of the person who's in front of you, playing with you. And if you manage that, you win the game. And so you either understand that and you enter into Marcel's uh, intellectual process, or you just look at the images as, are they well drawn, well painted or not? And you stake completely outside of his work. Many of his works, of his most important works, were either destroyed, broken or lost, and even worse, rejected. So he developed an attitude of, I did it, what happens after, we'll see. So now the paradox is that the mainstream culture is very interested in him, yet it does not understand him, nor does it accept the still radical contents of his work. The possibility of producing a monograph by a, by a French writer who had left Paris already in the 40s and lived with Duchamp and other exiled artists in New York since the early 40s, was a very seldom opportunity in 57, 58 to start with such a close bound, huge book with hundreds of images was a great opportunity and the perfect match for the younger generation of artists to be confronted with an, an oeuvre which was partly visible on the one hand, but not knowledgeable for a broader audience. My father, Robert Lebel, and Marcel Duchamp uh, met in New York in the 40s during the war, where uh, they were both refugees. And uh, they kept in touch and uh, decided to work together on uh, this extraordinary book which was a work of collaboration, you see. Here, we have the original 1959 copy of the English edition printed by Grove Press in New York. And um, that's the rare item, the original. And uh, as you know, Marcel, um, did the layout of this, everything. He, he, he supervised absolutely everything, including this extraordinary uh, way of gluing certain images not completely onto the paper and obliging the reader to work a little bit, you know, to lift things up to see what's underneath, which is, um, of course, not very good for lazy readers. Marcel Duchamp wanted to interact with the viewer. 
The way he uh, decided to put these images in uh, was really a request to the viewer to open it in a way to really uh, engage physically with the book. The English edition was out of print and uh, Robert Lebel's son, Jean-Jacques, was looking for a publisher to reposition this book, to reprint it. So he was looking uh, and starting to discuss this project with the Association Marcel Duchamp. And uh, this process of looking into who could be the right publisher uh, took a few years and we are uh, really honored that they then came to us, to House and Publishers, uh, with this project. I've been trying to put this together for more than 30 years. Nobody was really interested in doing that until um, we managed through Harold Falkenberg to talk to Ivan Wirt about this. He immediately understood the interest of putting out this extraordinary book. And um, finally, it happened. So it's important that th this facsimile edition can finally bring out to the general public the actual way that Marcel himself presented his work, you see. This is what's important about this extraordinary endeavor, is to bring back 60 years later what the man actually said about his own life and his own work. I feel this legacy aspect is very important. So where is the right place really for such a book? Who has the ability to really uh, develop it with all elements which are needed? So we hired this design platform Fluid because we knew they are researching the materials. They are very uh, knowledgeable about the different editions of Marcel Duchamp's book. Fluid is the right team to approach a project like this because we have no corporate identity, I think. Uh, you will not see a book and say, oh, it's Fluid, but you will see a book and you see, oh, it's Duchamp, or it's Lebel, or it's Arrow, or it's Askeyorn, or it's whatever. So what we try always is to find the way to do things as true as possible to the artist, or in this specific case, to the original book. I think the main challenge in producing a facsimile or a very good reproduction of a book which was originally printed in the 50s is that we are confronted today with completely different resources. Our paper is produced completely different today than it was produced in the 50s. We are not uh, producing a book with letter type. We are not printing on machines which you printed a book in the 50s. So you always have to find solutions for certain processes, for certain moments in the production we figured out that we have uh, the best results if we vectorize the letters, build up a new font, and reset the typography as it was in the original. It was really something, I think, uh, no one will believe it, but we looked at each single letter on 186 pages. When we talk about the printing process, we had to do multiple rounds of this image proofing and also establish what the correct color reference is. Because then once you're on press, um, the printer, they print off a sheet and then it has to be reviewed. And each sheet has to be reviewed against the reference. And so Fluid, they were able to be on press to examine the sheets as they came off the printing machine. So we had to do wet proofs. We had to do wet proofs with several papers. 
only to see only the, the glued in color images, to find the paper as thin and as shiny. Then we found one, but this had a white backside. But if you really look into the book and look under the glued in color images, they are not white, they are yellowish. So we had to print not only one side, but we had to print the back side also with 1% yellow, which is ridiculous. We have been so deep in this project that even a 2% yellow would have been a mistake. So um, the Hauser and Wirt edition will be the facsimile of this great historical masterpiece book here, plus a 60-page supplement as a testimony to the legacy of Marcel Duchamp today. So this is the front cover of the supplement, Marcel's hand and Marcel's cigar, but with an added smoke. He's holding up his cigar, sort of like saying, uh, stay away, <laughs> sort of. I'm smoking, please stay quiet. I'm really happy that Jean-Jacques Lebel opened his archive and uh, we had access to uh, never published archival material from encounters of his father with Marcel Duchamp, of other people around. Uh, who also wrote in the original book, like uh, André Breton, and we also included a never-published note by Man Ray. And um, together, what all of these supplementary texts do is they, um, they share with readers a better understanding of what the monograph was and is and remains to be. So our job is to give them the testimonies, the documents, the photos, the texts, to help them understand Marcel. But they have to do the work. We think this is a book which uh, should really reach a large audience. And we also think it's a book where we want students to read, our students and sharing this not just with people who are able to come to a gallery and experience, but for students, for teachers, for practicing artists. And this is the back cover. Marcel is a shadow, smoking his cigar. And the whole entire work of this great man's life going up into smoke and fading away, like a shadow fades away when the light goes out. My hope is that this facsimile circulates as much as possible, hoping that um, it will open the eyes and especially open the minds of the new generations into the universe of Marcel. It's a difficult philosophical enterprise, but it should not be prohibited to everyone to try and figure out what the Marcel Duchamp enigma is all about. <laughs>